When I first started in this movement, I put up a video about Freeman on the land. And one of the last lines that I came out with after spewing out loads of crap about, you know, you fell off the ship and, you know, you lost at sea and this hilarious kind of Monty Python-esque banter that seems to be the rhetoric behind Freeman on the land. I said, it's not that it doesn't work, it's that we're not doing it right. Now this was when I was incredibly naive, you know, I'd only been looking into this stuff for like four months, and I loved all the wordplay stuff, you know, citizenship, you know, so it's all about being on the water and, and all that crap. Um, but look, would you trust? Would you trust me to help you out with with like legal advice where your home is at stake, where your car might be at stake, where your liberty might be at stake? Okay. Um, and uh, another disclosure that I've got is that I previously got a criminal record. This was something I disclosed straight away on my channel, where I come from, why I've got into this spiritual stuff that I was looking to, at the time, I saw it as a quest for redemption, to improve and better myself, etc, you know, which is what we get into faith for and look beyond into philosophy, we want a better understanding of ourselves and of the world, and somewhere in that, I got caught up in the conspiracy stuff because I felt like I was a victim of the law because I'd gone out and burgled some houses and stolen some copper pipes and when the cops came I tried to say that I was trying to turn lead into gold and they didn't believe me so no, I'm just joking but you know um, and from that and previously being bankrupt, I then started to redeem myself after being on probation. Now this makes me no different from the likes of Mark Salem, from the likes of any of these guys like Dean Clifford and um, Michael and Bernasier who's lost loads of houses, all these names in the Freeman movement who are taking advantage of people in desperate situations. I'm in the same boat as them, and I could just go on YouTube and start preaching the rhetoric and get people on my side. Because when I said at the end of that video that it's not that it doesn't work, it's that we're not doing it right, people just, you know, the same well said, well done and all that, you know, but as soon as you say, oh, it doesn't work because everyone's going to jail and losing houses, that's outrageous. Yet, this gambling through, you know, lack of certainty from these, these people who, who have got criminal records and who've got proven track record for conning people, still believed. I, d I didn't believe myself, I didn't trust myself, so how the hell can I expect anybody to trust me? And, and one of the main um, reasons why I wanted to start going onto YouTube was to start talking about this conspiracy stuff. I watched a few Santos Benacci videos, a few Jordan Maxwell videos, and, and David Icke of course. And, you know, I was like, well if they can do that, I can do that. Except, I, ne I just couldn't bring myself to live in that constant state of fear of having that standoff with the law. I just couldn't do it because I wasn't just thinking of myself. I was thinking of the people around me, my family, my friends, my partner, you know, my, my dog, you know. It's a lot to gamble to live in that state of fear constantly of arguing with the law and being arrested all the time and losing everything that you own, well, say that you own. You know, I, I couldn't be arsed with that. I wanted to enjoy life. And that's why I never committed and that's why I only ended up looking at, at the philosophy, the spiritual side of things you know, re reading, actually reading some of the 
books that were recommended. And in doing so, I then started to find all these holes with, with the spiritual side of things. And I started to see that uh, these people who, you know, come across as if like they're really sure and certain of themselves, just like I did, and people believe me, except I didn't take it any further, um, were very fixed in their views and where I sort of separated, where, where the last straw was for me, in that I was always in this ambiguity about mm, maybe they are telling the truth, maybe they aren't, but I thought well they're only telling me what I want to hear and that is that the government's corrupt and the bankers are, are bastards, you know. Who doesn't want to hear that? Who isn't going to agree with that? That's just rhetoric. That's not proof for anything. Uh, and that's all that they seem to use as a justification. It's a cult. And at least I've got, you know, at least I'm being honest and saying, look, I lied. I, I, I went with it as well. I went online to want to try and make money out of talking about conspiracy. But it just, I couldn't bring myself to commit fully to that. I stayed on the outskirts of it because I didn't believe it. I didn't believe any of it, ultimately. I had no reason to believe that because I'm responsible for what I believe and what I think. And if I was living in the illusion and playing the game of the consent, then it's because I believed it. It's because I chose to believe it. Whether that's wittingly or unwittingly, I chose to believe that. Just the same way that I chose not to believe in it anymore. To say, hmm, there's more to society and life than what the government has got to offer me. And yet, yeah, it's very easy to fall into that trap of saying I'm a victim and that I'm being persecuted and that it's their fault and start pointing fingers but do you know where that gets you? Nowhere. It gets you absolutely nowhere and that's why it, I just can't take it seriously because it's just trying to find the person to blame because they believe that because that group over there is bad that we're justified in calling them bad and evil and villainizing them and there's more to life than that there really is than just spreading this crap and getting loads of people into trouble who are desperate and looking for your help and then you wonder you know, one of the arguments is, oh, well, they're still speaking about it, they're still part of the movement, they're still upholding these values. Well, of course they are, they've got no choice, have they? They're homeless, for one. They need the support of those who've got them into this mess. And that's the, the easiest way to get people on your side, to make the cost so extreme that they can't say that, it, that they've been scammed, you know? Um, that's how scams work. The cost is so high that you don't want to admit that you've been fooled. You know, just the same way that um, people will join the army and find out that it's not quite what they thought it was or what they were told, and that you know they'll lose an arm and a leg or a friend or you know you'll see some horrible things and it will cost them big time but they'll justify what they've done as good and righteous. You'll never get them to admit that what they've done is wrong or in some way that they've been fooled. And this is human nature, you know, and th this is why I, I just couldn't bring myself to do that to people because that's what it leads to. And I, I can show you posts of me a few years ago acting like a complete tit, being hysterical about this stuff just like you do and all I'm saying is take a look at yourself is what you is what you're into making your life any better no there's a lot more to life to enjoy than trying to bring down the system some things are out of your control and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't care about these things these are things that matter they affect us all but don't let the blame game overwhelm you don't you know get to the point where you can't turn back where you can't admit that you were wrong 
and this is why I'm making this video to say, look, I'm, I have a criminal record, I was bankrupt, so that means I'm shit with money and probably not that trustworthy for legal advice. Yet I went online talking about Freeman on the land and I could have, you know, I could have gone down that route, but I didn't because it's wrong. Just like Lee Harry submitted just before his death, who preached this stuff, lost everything. He says it's wrong. It's not real. You're missing the point. You're getting lost in the details. You're getting wrapped up in the pathos, the emotional reaction of being lied to. Well, take some responsibility. You are lied to, but you have the choice to believe it or not to believe it. And either way, you can call it deceit, but you chose to believe what you acted upon.